lovely people and welcome back to my channel to another episode of handheld recap now I'll tell you what guys this is an infamous one this one here this model is actually a uh, second edition of an already very rare handheld but this is hyper rare guys because I'm talking about the game.com that was made by Tiger. Yeah, Tiger, who make those, uh, yeah, what some people consider absolutely horrendous uh, handhelds back in the 80s. Um, that just had one game on them and uh, played like crap. But yeah, they actually made a whole handheld with small, but a library of games. So yeah, as I said, guys, the first version was already, or is already very rare. But this one, guys, you can't get for gold dust, you really can't. These ones are so rare, in fact, that you basically only ever see one, maybe two a year pop up even on eBay. And when they do, they go for an absolute wad of money. This is the backlit version, guys. Yep, this is the game.com. And as you can see there, guys, it says Pocket Pro, and it has a big switch saying light on it. That's because this one actually has a light, which is a massive improvement, but still didn't save it, guys. It did not because it's got an awful screen in it. It is one of the worst screens in any handheld I've ever come across. It really has. And as much as I love this thing for its weirdness and its, uh, you know, obscureness, I do love it. Um, it is very, very odd. Now, what they did with this one, guys, they tried to improve it, obviously, by putting that <laughs> light in it. Um, the light is uh, not exactly brilliant, but it was certainly better than the original model. But they also sacrificed for that, because on the original model, you had two cartridge slots, and on this one, you've only got one. So there was a sacrifice made there. But the form factor is much nicer. It is uh, a lot nicer looking. Oh, just so many things, guys. You saw the images coming up of the original one there. Um, but yeah, this is the one I'm recapping today. And as you can see, guys, we're looking at the front here, and you have an A, B, C, and D action buttons. You have a D-pad, which, yeah, isn't too bad, to be fair. Then you also have, oh, my ugly face. Then you also have the on and off switch there. You have menu. You have pause. You have a speaker over there. That is your indicator light. And these are nothing. They're not buttons. They do look like buttons, but they're just hiding screws underneath. Then on the bottom, guys, yeah, you have a headphone jack, which is a nice addition. Um, in there, guys, you've got two double A's. That is it. That's all you've got in this one, guys. Two double A's. That is brilliant compared to, for instance, like the Atari Jaguar, which I just did. Let's see if I can get that to come up. There we go. Yeah, just two double A's in there. That is how you get into the battery compartment. 
Now this has got one of those coatings on it, guys, that, uh, you know, you get a bit suspicious and you think, oh my God, Gizmondo and all that. But no, this has stayed lovely. It does not get sticky, but it's got that nice bit of grip to it. So yeah, it is not like the Gizmondo and so many other things, guys, that have got that sticky bloody residue from the, uh, yeah, the mid 2000s, early 2000s. But no, this is absolutely fine. In the back, you have your memory there, which is a battery, of course, a separate battery just for the memory. So you always got to be aware that you might have to change that at some point or other. Then here you got a stylus. Now that is, of course, because this is in fact a touch screen. So yeah, it looks very much like a DS kind of stylus. So yeah, it is a touch screen, guys, but it's a captive touch screen. It's not one of them great ones that we all love these days. It's uh, yeah, very, very odd one indeed. Then yeah, up here, guys, you've got a thing for plugging in other stuff. So you would take this out here like that, and then you can plug in all sorts of other bits and bobs. There was even a thing that connected it to your TV and so on. So that is that one. Let's see if I can get that back in, shall we? And probably not in a hurry. Oh dear, here we go, look. Now I've mucked it all up, trying to get the bloody thing back on here. There we go, back on, there we go. So yeah, it is very, very interesting indeed. And then when you turn it around here, obviously it tells you what the bits are for, like there and there. Yeah, and there's a reset button right there so that you can reset the thing if need be. So yeah, pretty cool, guys. Now, this one here, this is also a power socket, obviously, so you can run it over a standard kind of barrel charger. Uh, yeah, absolutely blinding. No shoulder buttons or anything like that. Just like there, that is all the buttons you get. Nothing on the sides except for here, guys. You've got your uh, contrast and your volume wheel, which you're going to need that contrast quite often, even with the light on. So on that side, absolutely nothing except for the cartridge slot. I say absolutely nothing, then I go, oh, uh, 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 except for the cartridge slot, uh, 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 except for the contrast, and you know what I mean. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, what a lovely machine compared to the original. Absolutely stunning. So in the box, guys, you also got, or should I say in this one, in this one's case, it came in a blister pack and you did get some booklets like this. He says, moving him out of the way just for a sec. Go on, get out of the way for a sec. There we go. So you got some booklets like the ultimate portable game system. What a fucking lie. One of the biggest lies ever. The brand new game.com pocket pro. Mm. They really do like to live off the fact that, yeah. Oh, there's the original one right there, look. That it's got a back light, or should I say front light, because it's more like a bloody front light. It is in front light, in fact. And yeah, it just shows you lots of bits and bobs in there to do with your new swanky, lovely. You can see how new with that computer there being ancient. Yeah, swanky handheld, what you can do. And then it also shows you the games like Castlevania there. Uh, which never actually came out. Resident Evil 2, which did. Sonic, Duke Nukem, oh, all these different games, guys. All these different ones. Look. Some never actually appeared in the end. And a lot of them did. Right. Indy 500. Oh, the, the, you think, oh my God, they've got some fantastic games there. But no. They were freaking awful the way they played, unfortunately, you know, with that horrible screen or what have you. And they just weren't very good ports if they were a port. Like Resident Evil 2, guys, what an absolute pile of crap that was. And I'm going to show you that in a bit, but in better situation, shall we say, than using the screen on the actual unit itself. But there you go, guys, you can see there. There's their address, their old address there. Yeah, that was that one. And in this one, guys, this is like a user guide kind of thing. You know, telling you all the wonderfulness you can get from 
yourgame.com. What the buttons do and all that shit. You know what I mean. Yeah, it's just that, guys. There we go. So you got them in your blister pack. Now let's pull him back in. Now we're going to turn him on and have a quick look at... Uh, I do believe I've got Sonic Jam in there. So we'll have a quick look at that on the actual system itself. But I will show you that through other means, as he says, so you can see the game properly. Right, let's see. Here we go. So it doesn't come automatically, the uh, the light, guys. And this is going to be really awkward to film. It's going to look like crap. And yes, that was on full volume. He does say game.com active. Not that you would ever bloody believe it. Hey, no, you wouldn't. Right, so let's have a look here. Let's go into there. And where we go, are we? Yeah, here we go, guys. And then you're in. As I said, the volume is awful. And it always was awful. And if you can see that, then you're very, very freaking lucky indeed. Because I can barely see it. Let's turn the light off. He says, go on, go off, you bugger. There we go. Can't see it any better. No, put it back on. There we go. So yeah, bit of a pig, this one. So I'm not even going to attempt to try and play it on the screen and film it because it's just freaking impossible. But there you can see, guys, look, front lit screen. And that is half the problem that these companies didn't just understand the fact that if you put a backlit screen in, it's much better. Hmm. So yeah, let's turn that off. Now, obviously, uh, I'm going to turn it back on again because I want to show you some of the other bits that are on there. If we can see them. Hey. But yeah, let's put that light back on because it does help a little bit, he says. There we go. So, you might not be able to see that because it's awful, but you do have an organiser. You've got solitaire built in. You've got a calendar and all that goodness. Uh, all sorts of bits and bobs on there that you cannot see right now. Mm. But yeah. A lot of stuff there, internet and what have you. If you bought the uh, the extra bit that you could plug into it and use it with the internet. But of course, the internet wasn't the internet back then. It was just bloody text, really. You couldn't do much else but text. And that is not fun at the best of times, is it? No, it's not. Right, let's turn it off. There we go. So yeah, what a fantastic little unit this is looking. Yeah, very deceiving, isn't it, eh? It's a bit like an angel child who's really a hell child, isn't it? Yeah, but I do love it, guys. I do love it a lot. Let's take that cartridge out because that is Sonic, obviously, jam. Yes, they did attempt to put Sonic jam on there, but it didn't quite work out, did it? No, it didn't. Let's have a look at some of these cartridges, actually. Look, there we go. That's what they look like. Quite interesting shaped. Very thick. They have that on the end, so they've got that right. At least you know what you've got. And they have the whopper on the front label. There we go. And yeah, they are nicely covered. The uh, points on your uh, motherboard there. So yeah, that, that wasn't too bad at all, guys. And it has a bit of a pull to get it out of the system, even though I did struggle a little bit there, didn't I? Right, so that is Sonic. I've just grabbed a, a handful here to show you. You got Mortal Kombat here, but oh my god, is this a piss poor version? It really is, guys. Um, awful, awful game. But you know, you, you've got it. <laughs> you can play it if you want. Oh, seriously. I mean, it takes it up a notch from Tiger and throwing legs at each other on one of their little handhelds. But um, yeah, not much of a level up. And you got Henry. Not much to say about that one. It's a bit shit. And you got, <laughs> yeah, Fighters Mega Mix, guys. Another Sega one. Oh, dear God. If you've ever played the proper Fighters Mega Mix, like I said, the proper one. Uh, oh, don't torture yourself. Let's put it that way. And you have this one here. Which I can't even remember what it's bloody called. He says, looking right at it. Yeah, it's, it's a quiz show thing anyway. Cyber something or other. Cyber trivia. Or, uh, boring. Wheel of Fortune. And there's another one of these as well. There's a one and two. Just for all your Wheel of Fortune fun. Ugh. And one of the best games on it. 
This is Batman and Robin. This was a packing game with the original. Uh, yeah, with, along with Lights Out. Hmm. But it's actually pretty damn cool. The graphics on it are pretty superb. It has to be said, they really are pretty damn cool. But yeah, that is Batman. Hmm. So yeah, you can see, guys, there was quite a lot of games on this machine, like I showed you in the book. But, oh my God, do they play like crap? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a look, like I said, at two games, guys. We're going to take a look at a Sonic Jam in a better light, uh, kind of, in a better way, and Resident Evil 2. And you're going to see what I mean, guys, by... Oh, no matter what you do, even if you were to put a modern screen into this, it wouldn't make a freaking difference. They would still be absolutely crap. But at least you can see the game is actually playing mm, kind of all right. Right, should we do that then? Back in a sec.
Well, was that a little bit easier to watch? Mm, I suppose it was a little bit easier to watch. But um, yeah, guys, um, I'm giving it a lot of stick, aren't I? But if you looked at my original unboxing video of this, you will know that my feelings on it are, I love it. I absolutely love it. And it is one of the crown jewels of my collection because it is so, so hard to get. And I fought long and hard to get this one back in the day when I got it. So in that sense, I love it. I love the look of it. I think it's gorgeous looking, especially compared to the original model, as I keep saying. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it's very, very obscure, isn't it? So you've got to love it. It is just so, so sad that oh, Tiger didn't jump more onto it. A little bit better. I mean, by this time, guys, when this came out, and the original for that matter, you could have a colour screen. You could have a better way of having a touch screen already. You could have a uh, captive rather than, uh, you, know, you know. Oh, it, it's just absolutely sad that Tiger went the way they did with this uh, handheld. It could have been something truly great with its internet capabilities and what have you. Yeah, they really... Oh, they just did it all wrong, guys, right down to the marketing, as you saw with that advert at the beginning. I mean, to go and insult people that are going to hopefully buy your handheld by telling them they've got no brain cells, well, that wasn't a fantastic way of doing it, was it? No, not at all. Not at all, guys. And then the games, yeah? There's all these games, guys, yeah? All these games, but they're all bollocks. Even the ones that are meant to be Ugh, ports of decent franchises they didn't work out did they no they didn't Ugh. so yes guys i mean what a rarity to have in your collection i love it i really do even though i keep slacking it off i do love it guys i really do um and it is literally one of the crown jewels of my collection but there you go do you remember the tiger.com did you have a tiger.com do you have the original or this one? The Pro. What's the bloody Pro about it? I don't know, but there you go. Yeah. Did you have one? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Did you uh, kind of end up with that instead of a Game Boy Advance or anything like that at the time? Because I bet you were fucking disappointed, weren't you? But nowadays, guys, like I said, what an absolute uh, stonker to collect. And you've got to have very deep pockets to collect it in the first place because it's so freaking expensive. Um, box games can cost anything up to 50 quid this unit guys you can pay well over 200 quid for it and that's probably not in very good condition if it was complete with its uh, original fucking bloody plastic cover um, you know sort of boxed if you like then you're probably talking more like 300 so yeah 
not a cheap one, guys, by a long shot. Oh, dear, blister pack. That's the word I was trying to think of, blister pack. So, yeah, comment below, guys. Tell me your thoughts on the tiger.com, full stop. Not just this one, on the original one as well. I remember back in the day, the entertainer was selling the game.com. That is way back, guys, way, way back. Um, yeah, and uh, that was about the only bloody place I ever saw it, I think. Uh, maybe Toys R Us had it for a little while, because I do know they had the cartridges for quite some time, until they shut, in fact. So, yeah. There we go, guys. Comment away. You know how I love to read your comments. And with that, I'm going to wrap things up, and I'm going to say the usuals. Actually, I'm going to change that, because I want to inform you of a new channel that I launched. It now has, I do believe, five videos as of recording this, and it is all about Tudor Mint. Now, if you don't know what Tudor Mint is, it was a British company that right up until 2005 were uh, making fantastic pewter style, although they were metal with uh, kind of like silver or gold put onto them, and uh, yet they looked like pewter. Uh, they also did ranges where they had coloured figures and what have you. Um, fantasy. The ones I love dearly, myth and magic, they were literally, they looked like pewter. They were beautiful. They always had an Austrian crystal or two or three or even more in some cases, guys. Uh, yeah, so if you love that kind of thing, if you love fantasy, you might want to check out my other channel. It is called Tudor Mint Collecting with UK Kraut. And as I say, guys... About five videos up there already, more to come very soon. So if you love all that fantasy, and you maybe even know what I'm talking about when I say Tudor Mint, get over there, take a look, and see what you think of that channel as well. Right, and now I'm going to say the usuals. If you're not subbed already, please drop me a sub. Give me a thummy thumbs up if you feel that way inclined, and of course tap the bell icon and the all icon to get any future notifications whatsoever. And again, guys, if you love emulation and retro consoles like and the game.com i've got a fantastic group for you on facebook it is the retro emulation and consoles fan group with over 5,000 members guys you can't go wrong there is a ton of content as well from system unboxing system reviews emulation forms tech help videos and a whole lot more and again guys just a most wonderful admin team looking after things over there and then, guys, I also have my UK Crowd Gaming Facebook group as well. We'll cover everything gaming from the dawn of gaming with Pong Machines right the way through to PS5 and everything that came in between. And again, tons of content there because other YouTubers put their videos up there every single day, including myself, of course. So, yeah, if you just love video games from all the different generations, then that is the place for you. Also, linked below. And finally, guys, I have my channel membership. For as little as 99 pence a month, you can become a member of the UK Crowd family. This will give you access to the members-only videos. It will also get you a badge next to your name. And it lets everybody know that you are a member of the UK Crowd family. And it changes colour every month. So, guys, if you're interested in that, please go to the Join button. There is other tiers of other perks attached. Just take a look and see what you think. And with that, I'm going to say our videos in. Tschüss and goodbye. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.